Ruth, the story of God's redemption, the power of God's restoration. Thanks for joining me this morning, 66 days of reading through God's word. In the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judea left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two boys with him. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife was Naomi. The story we find in the book of Ruth is a story that reveals God's redemptive plan. It speaks to us about the power of God's restoration in our life. Redemption is God's plan, and it moves us from bitterness, brokenness, to a place of blessing. God's redemptive plan brings complete restoration in our heart and in our life. The story of Elimelech, their two sons, and Naomi, is a story where it begins with famine and it ends with family. It's a story that begins with a funeral and ends with a wedding. It's God's restoration. There was a great famine in the land, and Elimelech decided that the family should move to Moab. They did. He passes away. The boys had married, and both sons pass away. The story continues with brokenness and what Ruth in the book describes in chapter 1. Naomi has a broken and bitter heart because of the bitterness that came to her life. In verse number 13, it says, Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Speaking to her daughter-in-laws, things are far more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord himself has raised against me. It's a story of brokenness and bitterness, and all the heart and the suffering in the life of Naomi. Well, she makes the decision to go back to Bethlehem. You know Bethlehem, oh little town of Bethlehem. As we move through the Christmas season, we know that the Messiah, Christ, was born in Bethlehem. This is where Elimelech and Naomi had had their family and had a farm. Now they're moving back, that is, Naomi is. But Ruth wants to go too. Don't ask me to leave you. Wherever you go, Ruth said, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. What a powerful passage of scripture, all found in today's reading in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. You see, Naomi's life had become bitter. In chapter 1, verse 20, it says, Don't call me Naomi when she returned back to Bethlehem and was speaking to her friends. Instead, call me Mara, for the Almighty has made my life very bitter. Life is filled with setbacks and sorrow, and no one is described with more heartbreak than Naomi. They lost their farm and their friends. They lost their family all in Moab, husband and two boys. And now she comes back to Bethlehem with a daughter-in-law that she reluctantly allowed to follow. She is broken. But God takes our brokenness or our bitter life experience 
and by his redemptive plan, he restores us. When we get to the end of the story in Ruth chapter 4, verse 14, it says, Then the women of the city said to Naomi, Blessed are thee, who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May the child that was just born become famous. Naomi took the little baby in her arms. She cuddled him and she cared for him as if the baby were her own. Of course, as you recall this story, and maybe read through these four chapters with only 85 verses in it today, you'll recall how Ruth is going to meet Boaz. And Boaz becomes the kinsman redeemer and marries Ruth, providing a child that would be the grandchild to Naomi. That baby's name, Obed, who will have a son named Jesse, who will have a son named David, king of Israel. You know the rest of the story and how the lineage goes all the way down to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You see, this is a picture of Christ as our kinsman redeemer. For Boaz to be the kinsman redeemer required three things. Number one, you needed to be a close relative. Number two, you had to be willing to be the kinsman redeemer. And when Boaz contacted a closer relative, that relative declined being the kinsman redeemer. There had to be a close relationship and there had to be a willingness to become the kinsman redeemer. And finally, the third aspect of being the kinsman redeemer is you had to be willing and uh, uh, had the ability to make the payment. And you see, that's the reason why Christ is our kinsman redeemer. He became flesh. John 1.1. 1, 1. And the word became flesh. And he was willing. In John 10, it says that he's the great shepherd, the good shepherd. And he freely lays down his life as sacrifice for the sheep. Oh, but he doesn't just have the willingness and he didn't just become flesh. He was without blemish. Our sin is covered by the blood of the lamb, the lamb of God that had no sin. There was no blemish in Christ Jesus. He is the perfect sacrifice. Number one, you must be related. Number two, you must be willing. And number three, you must have the ability to pay the price. Oh, as we read through the book of Ruth today, you'll be reminded to study Naomi and Elimelech, Ruth, Obed, Jesse, David, and of course, the kinsman redeemer in the story is Boaz. Two of my very favorite passages of scriptures include, where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will become my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. And of course, Ruth chapter 4. So Boaz took Ruth. He becomes the kinsman redeemer. And she became his wife, and he went unto her. And the Lord blessed her, and she was able to conceive and give birth to a son. All of this happens in the city of Bethlehem. Then the women said to Naomi, No longer are you bitter, but God has given you a kinsman redeemer. You have been completely restored. You are blessed. Blessed of the Lord. Oh, thanks be unto God we have a redeemer. Thanks be unto God that our lives that can go through experiences that are broken and bitter. Have you ever been filled with an empty heart? 
Has your life ever been broken and you just say, God, how did these things happen? You had dreams and they just completely unraveled. You had hopes and, and you, you just knew things were going to be better. But like Naomi, it just seems that life can spiral and fall apart. Setbacks and disappointments. Having to move, not wanting to lose all of your friends. Seeing sickness come to your family and even death. All of these things are what Naomi experienced. Oh, but God blesses us with a kinsman redeemer. And by the blood of the lamb, by that free sacrifice of the one that became flesh, yes, Christ Jesus, the son of God, we are redeemed and we are restored. Today, you have a blessed life. Number one, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, which means you have eternal life. You are blessed. Number two, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I love reading the Bible. Thank you for joining me in 66 days. One chapter each day as we go through the whole Bible. Today is significant because we're beginning beginning our second week of the new year. I want to commend you for following through on your new year's resolution to read the Bible every day. Father, we thank you for our kinsman redeemer. We thank you that you, Father, sent your son. We thank you, Christ, that you came, that you freely gave your life, and that Your blood covers all of our sin. I pray today your blessing upon each and every heart as we walk in your word, filled with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, you be blessed today as you continue to walk in the word.